Okay, so this is a continuation from my last tutorial, and I call this a glass study. And now, in the last tutorial, when I talked about UV texture sets and so forth, um, I've actually set up a different material here. So again, if I go to my little globe setting here, um, I have a basic PBR metal roughness. The only difference is inside of iRay, I've set up refraction. So in this case, I have refraction set up pretty high. Uh, you can see that the color is, if I hit scattering here, I start to get like a scattering effect, which gives it somewhat of a frosty look. And then the index of refraction, which again, I could bring up pretty heavy. You can see the offset of the stair step is very heavy there. So we are getting a nice bit of refraction. And like I mentioned before, if your glass, if, you're, if your material is not a flat, perfect plane like this is, but slightly more curved, um, like for instance, the cockpit window, uh, then you would definitely have a better deal in regards to getting the kind of exaggeration sort of like bowed out effect or clown mirror effect with the geometry. Now that can be exaggerated actually by coming in and painting height information, which I'm about to show you. So again, you can see that you can come over here to your display settings while in iRay and bring up the exposure. It's really not messing too much with the transparency of the glass. So that's one thing to be aware of. Let me pop out of here. And if we take a look at the actual layering here, I have no layers in here, but if I were to make a fill layer, right? And let's take a look at the fill layer options here. You have color, height, roughness, metallic, and normal, right? So if I go back over here and just go to color, if you put this to a, black, a white color, let's go ahead and render it through, you get white clear glass, okay? So the color information actually will dictate when you have refraction on. So if you put this all the way to black and we hit refraction or we hit the render here, we get full black. So it's good if you're going to start with glass uh, to come in here and set a, a basic fill brush here to white like that. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So think of the base color uh, is like the transparency or the intensity of the transparency. So white would be very transparent, black would be not very transparent at all. So that's a color issue. So with that said, we can come over here and I'm gonna start painting certain things such as, let's see what happens when we paint things based on height and so forth. So I'm gonna make another layer, just a layer itself, not an actual fill layer. So we got this layer on top. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start playing around, not necessarily with any one of these except height. And I'll put the height information up a little bit. I'm going to go to my brushes here, and let's go ahead and choose a brush that would be kind of cool, like maybe eh, there's almost like glass that's somewhat shattered or dented up over time. That's going to be kind of hard to pull off. Uh, let me do like, eh, let's try fur random here and see what that looks. And let's see, let me pull that into my brush. Oh, it doesn't allow me to bring it. Eh, okay. Oh, those are brushes. Actually, let me just click on a couple brushes here. Let's, let's fiddle around. Let's not look at alphas here. And bring my brush size up. So this could be, you could qualify this as like scratches, right? So let's go ahead and just paint away here. And again, you can, if you take a look in here, you're, you're not seeing anything. But if I go ahead and hit the letter C and toggle through to my height information, you can see I'm going to put that in. And now I'm going to jump to my eye ray. And now you're getting like dense of uh, just, you can see all the little refractions going through everything. And this is why I'm really stressful in the last tutorial how you want to have two different materials uh, for, or different uh, UV texture sets and glass on its own texture set. Otherwise, this will not work. So again, this is kind of hard to do because you can't look at it interactively with this. You have to actually turn this off and now I can go, <clears throat> obviously I can t uh, come to my height information and take the linear dodge setting of the transparency down. So it's maybe just halfway there. And then I can go ahead and jump back into the render engine. And now you can see the glass isn't as pronounced, the, the dents and so forth. So this can be used for uh, creating all types of crazy uh, glass dent indentations. Um, for instance, let's just, and again, I highly, highly recommend you take the time just to play with this. So for instance, you could see with this, I can come over here um, and I could just say, uh, let's see here. Let's let's delete this layer. I'll make another uh, just regular layer here. And this time I'm going to go ahead and just let's paint again some height information. I'll bring it up and let's see if we can find some really cool brushes. So just have a little bit of fun in here. 
And you can see if I just pull pull this one up, right? This is like sort of like a bubble effect here. So I'm going to spray that on. Just spray some spray around some brushes. See what happens. You know, just make your brush size bigger. What happens if you do a gash like that, right? Um, see what else we got here. So like dirt. What if dirt's on? But you know, you can come over here, and then of course you can change the flow here to a very low transparency and I'll just put a little bit of something in there and now I'm going to go ahead and render it and see how it looks. So now you're getting more of a frosted glass on this side and even on this side too you see the exaggeration is giving you a frosty look. So if you're going for that frosty glass look this is a great way to get a nice frosty glass wave so just um, just height like that so you can see. And again you can dial this all down by coming into the layer itself going under the height pull down and taking the intensity down halfway like 50. And now you can go ahead and render again. And now you can see it's less intense. It's a little bit less intense. But we're getting some nice refraction and so forth. And now we can come in and add another layer and add some dirt. So again, I'll just pop in here. Again, a lot of this is done in just <coughs> single la layers, not fill layers. So this one would be like frosted glass. And then with this layer, I will go ahead and call it um, dirt. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my base color here, and let's let's go ahead and paint some, I'm not going to paint any height, roughness I will paint in, I want a, a very heavy roughness because dirt is very rough, uh, it doesn't, it's not like a mirror-like material. So I have dirt 3, which is a nice brush, and I could just come over here and add a little dirt here. So let me go back to M for uh, the actual paint here, and I'm coloring white, so I want to choose a color that's like a dark dark brown. There we go. And we did this a little bit in the last lesson, but you can see how I can add a little bit of dirt. Let's see if I can find just a little bit of scummy dirt here. Let's see. And, uh, let's see. There's always a little tricky getting the dirt to work right here. Um, I also like going to my alphas here. And again, I always talk about this before. You always want to go back to your brushes and return to the basic soft brush. And now you can come in here to your brushes and put in, drop in your alpha. So again, I'll go to my alphas, and you can see there's some really nice drip drippage going on here. So I can go ahead and bring the size up like this. Ooh, it's a little bit too big. Um, but hey, what the heck, right? Let's let's put some crap in there again. You can project you can project this through as well. So let's see if I get some dirt up there, it seems like my it's like my yeah everything's good. So let's check. Let's just poke around again. I'm just trying to find some really cool little dirt indentations here. And even what's really cool is, in this case, what if I just paint, like, say, oh, let's go with this handprint. Where's that handprint at? So I'll go find, uh, like, a handprint. But I'm only going to paint roughness, right? So I'll come over here, and let's go to hit uh, C and go through to our roughness. There it is. So I'm going to paint that as very, very rough. And let's... Take the roughness value down to black, and we'll put paint rough up there. So let's go ahead and just see what we got. So what's really interesting is you're seeing um, a combination of the height information interacting with the roughness information right here. You can see the dirt kind of building up over here. And I think what I'll do is I'll jump out, and I'm going to turn off my frosted glass layer just so I can take a look at the how the, the roughness is doing by itself. So you can see with um, <clears throat> a roughness that is really high, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, diffusion or, or uh, kind of a light light bounce sheen there. It's kind of hard to see. And you could also, again, you could taint, uh, bring up your absorption color if you want to tint this a uh, slight color. I mean, maybe your glass is slightly blue. So you can go and just add a slight uh, blue to this again, like that, and add a little absorption color there. But if you take a look very carefully, you can see that handprint there. So this is something that you definitely want to experiment with to get used to understanding of how to get in here and paint dirt and grime and dirt and dust and so forth. And again, of course, you can go to your uh, orthographic views. Uh, you can come over here and choose uh, uh, orthographic view. And you could start painting this stuff in. So again, you could just go into your projection mode here. And you know, just start painting brush brushes in here in projection mode. And same thing with height. You can paint up a little bit of height. And now, if we go back in and render, 
we could see here we are looking at orthographic view and you can see it looks like a handprint in there it's pretty cool there it is so you can see it's got like some depth to it so lots of cool stuff you can do with glass and again it's just a matter of understanding respecting and getting into and practicing in using a separate shader that has the refraction on okay so that's it